go back to charging him, unlocks it open, and he hands it to General Washington. Do you think that General Washington would look at that and say, my God, this is too powerful a weapon for a free people to own? Do you think he'd say that? Do you think he'd say, I will write you a check for as many of these as you could make. Tell the men, use it wisely, and when they're done, take it home and make a free country. Which do you think he would do? Uh, for all of you that have rank sticks with computers, I want to give you a name to research. Dr. Edwin Vieira, and that's V-I-E-I-R-A. He's a uh, law professor at Harvard, PhD type, couple of them actually. He's also a PhD chemist, which is weird. He talks about something called the power of the person sword, talking about the Constitution. And what's interesting is you go through this stuff, he has a number of videos giving talks from for Neil Hall in Boston. And he talks about the two legs of the Constitution. And right away I go, two legs? I mean like in a stool? The stools have three legs. And then he goes, and the third leg of the Constitution that everybody's forgotten. Oh, we have the power of the purse, the power to tax, the power of the sword to enforce it. But the third leg is the power of the people. And over the last 200 years, actually since the Civil War actually, They've done everything they can to negate and reduce the power of we, the people. And that's what we need to get back to. So I invite you all, take the time, research Dr. Vieira, watch his eight videos, and if you're stupid like me, or crazy like me, or committed like me, I bought the CDs, and then I bought his 20,000 word book. I'm still working through it. And he lays it all out about what the militia, the constitutional militia is. Because you go back to the 1700s and prior to that, did the settlers in each town have a threat? Yes, Indians, robbers, bears, coyotes, all that. So did they have to do something for the common defense? Yes, they did. Every man from the age of 15 to 60 years old had to have a weapon. And he had to have the accoutrements to support that weapon. Guns, powder, bags, whatever he needed. And he had to keep it in order and he had to be inspected by the local town council. And if he didn't have it, he was fine. Now, I believe Rhode Island still has that law in effect. You have to have that. And if he was a person that had no money, he was an indentured servant or something else like that, he could work it out. The town would buy him the guns because he was an able-bodied man. And if the husband was dead and the woman was alone, you're going to love this one, guys, the woman would have to pay to supply some other man and she'd buy him the guns and the accoutrement, and she would support him in defense of the country. That's where it all came from. Where do I find a woman like that? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, so it gets down to we the people. And I, keep, I can't harp that on enough because they believe we the people don't have the authority, and we do. And when it comes to Second Amendment, it was very simple. Thomas Jefferson said to Madison, and I love this one, you know, Nobody's going to need this Second Amendment until the day they come to take it. And folks, they're coming. Has anybody been following the Army and the Department of Homeland Security? Yeah. Yes. Okay, they're up to two billion rounds now. Okay, we left some cab pro stuff here. Seventeen congressmen have gone to the Department of Homeland Security, the lovely Napolitano, your old governor, and asked, can you please explain this? And the response was, we don't report to Congress and we don't have to tell you. Whoa, 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 where did that come from? They don't work for us anymore. They don't work for us anymore. And that's the response they got. Last year, I worked with Tom McClintock and his staff. They went through the same thing and they were told, well, we're just buying it because we're getting a discount on the prices. <laughs> you know, they're buying 40 cal hollow point. They right now, last count, have uh, 600 million rounds of hollow point ammunition, which were outlawed by the Geneva Convention. That's a people killer, folks. That's what hollow point's for. So they're arming up. The government is moving towards something called civil unrest or civil war. Why do they need that? And if we the people don't stand and understand our rights as a second amendment, we're done. Any questions? You, you jump. Go ahead. I, I, have, I have something to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got questions. We're up. short on time. We're short on time. We need to do just questions. Okay. Question 
comments, rhetorical. I think propaganda has been very powerfully used to our disadvantage. I think we need to revise the way we use language. We should not talk about gun control. We should talk about victim disarmament. We should not talk about assault weapons. We should talk about defensive weapons. We need to re-examine that. Don't let the mainstream media, part of the propaganda machine, take control of our language. Agreed. I want to agree very briefly with this gentleman's statement. We have some bumper stickers up here that say gun control made the Holocaust possible. No more Nazi gun laws. They're free. To, I mean, we sell them on the website. I've got a bunch free. For those of you who'd like to make a little kinder, gentler statement, we have one that says, gun control is not kosher, with a six-pointed star and two AR-15s flanking it. So if you'd like, please avail yourself of them and save me from having to drag them back to Tucson with me. And I will, uh, I will be glad to see some of them floating around in, in the People's Republic. These are the ones that got three inches cut off the barrel. <laughs> hey, you know, there's, it's a Jewish ritual. <laughs> so thank you guys for your attention. Thank you very much for your questions. And as far as the uh, ammunition goes with the government reloading or, or arming up, um, we can all arm up too, but I'm sure those of you who are enthusiasts know and understand how difficult it is begin, beginning to be to buy something these days. I would encourage you all to invest in and investigate reloading. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for your questions. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. OK, let's wrap up here. We want to wrap things up here. I believe there's, um, we have uh, two things left. We have one more resolution to consider and then um, endorsement of candidates. And then we go. So after this, the executive committee meeting will meet. It's hopefully, it's uh, 410. We're actually early. Can you believe that? Well, we'll see how early. Let me see if we actually get done. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. That's right. Um, well, We'll see where how about I say we'll see where it's at and we'll call the meeting whenever. Okay. Um, I believe the secretary pro tem had to go to the restroom, so um can you go to Huh? No. No? Um, Mr. Barbie, could you Oops, sorry. just five minutes before she uh, gets back? Um, without objection from the body can um, we allow Mr. Darby to, to fill in the secretary role temporarily until the other secretary pro tem comes back? Hearing no objection, okay. Uh, Mr. Morton. I've been asked to bring forward a resolution to adopt Assemblyman Donnelly's AB 351. If I could read this, whereas the Libertarian Party of California reaffirms the rights of the First, Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, Eighth, and Fourteenth Amendments as an alienable to man and to denounce the unconstitutional powers currently held by the President of the United States of America under the National Defense Authorization Act, find the bill known as AB 351, the California Liberty Preservation Act, to be the first line of defense for the citizens of California. The Libertarian Party of California publicly supports the legislation introduced by Assemblyman Donnelly and the demand and advances that the public servants within the legislative house recognize the rights of the people and require the federal government to adhere to the delegated powers expressly expressly granted within the confines of the constitution providing no aid to the violation of the rights of the citizens of the state of california there have been a number of these passed out hopefully you've seen that already um, Someone, Tim Donnelly was the gentleman who came to our um, rally on Friday. Okay, uh, the 
Motion's been made. Is there a second? Stay second. 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 I have it. Okay. Discussion. Um, Mr. Martin, Mr. Chair, do you, you spoke to the um, resolution? You're just ready for the resolution, right? Do you want to speak to it real quick? Okay, Mr. Donnelly has addressed the, the legislation known as NADA from Washington, D.C. that gives the federal government rights over our express rights in the Constitution and over, overrules the rights, which I don't remember which ones they were, and I gave it away, but uh, first, fourth, sixth, fifth, 14th and 10th. Um, so anyway, this says we believe in the Constitution rather than whatever they're doing in Washington, D.C. right now. And Mr. Donnelly has introduced legislation that would actually um, provide uh, penalties for any federal or state official enforcing those laws against citizens of California. I highly support this resolution. Um, so we get someone to go inside and make sure we have more members. We're getting very dangerously close to the head of last before. I'll ask. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I wish to speak in favor of this uh, resolution. I wish it was unnecessary to have to reaffirm our constitutional rights to our legislatures, but it appears that that is what we must do. So I speak in favor of this. Is there anyone in opposition to the resolution? Any further discussion? Okay, well, shall we come to a vote? Yes. All those in favor of? Sorry, without objection, hearing no objection, come to a vote. All those in favor of approving the resolution as displayed on the screen, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The resolution passes. Okay. Thank you. I the uh, final order that we have is a endorsement of candidate, and the candidate will be there. Do that. Mr. Chairman, while we're waiting for that, I'd like to uh, propose a short and sweet resolution. Uh, resolve Blue Tree Park, Park, California thanks the management staff of the Hyatt Regency for its hospitality and assistance with making our 2013 State Party Convention a successful event. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Resolution has been made and seconded. Uh, thank the Hyatt for uh, their hospitality. Thank you, uh, Any further discussion? Seeing no discussions, we'll do this without objection. <laughs> Hearing no objection, the resolution passes. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion uh, that the uh, body endorse uh, Alex Bill for Mayor of Encinitas. What? Uh, Alex is running for Mayor of Encinitas. In San Diego County. San Diego County. Sorry. Right. Sorry, is, is he here? I, I'm trying to use that. Actually, Alex is in the middle of uh, doing an interview right now. He has a radio show, too. So he's kind of trying to get kind of back in here as quickly as he can. Do you know anything about his candidacy? Yeah, um, he wants to run uh, primarily on, on a uh, pro legalizing marijuana uh, platform because Encinitas is giving all of the dispensaries a hard time and they have been for a very long time, but I don't think they're actually currently allowing one to be open in Encinitas. And then also what he, he's kind of, he's, um, he wants to do like almost to make Encinitas a, uh, like a free trade sort of city, and I, and I mean when it comes to currency. He wants to say, well, you can barter and trade whatever you want, so he wants to put a resolution of that into uh, the city council along with the uh, uh, mainly marijuana platform. Okay. Is there a second to the endorsement of Alex Fidel? Second. second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, shall we come to a vote? All those in favor of endorsing Alex Fidel for the mayor of Encinitas, city council, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, nothing carries. Okay, I believe we've. Uh, oh, there's Alex. Why don't you raise your hand? Say, "Quick audio." Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any other candidates seeking endorsement? No other candidates. Would you like to make it? I move 
Will we adjourn? Signed, D. Second. 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 Third. Fourth. We have a motion to adjourn. Uh, it's made seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Thank you, everyone. Executive committee members, um, let's meet, let's see, it's uh, 418, let's plan to go be at the office by 5 to start the meeting. Um, just, it's on 770 L Street, it is um, basically down the street. You can just walk two blocks away from the Capitol. Um, the building, this, this morning, I'm going to explain Nine fifty. If you walk down the street, we are at twelve. We're going to eight. Um, anybody wants to follow me to go there? I'm going there now.